Welcome to the session today. Thanks for joining me. Uh, my name is Zach Wolfit. We're going to be looking at teaching in the next dimension. I'm going to share some ideas with you, uh, perhaps at a didactic level and also at a philosophical level to reflect on teaching. I wish I could be with you in person in Berlin, but we'll have to wait until next year. So I hope you are doing well. Um, today, uh, I conduct research into uh, teaching, learning and technology at the research group at in Holland. And my particular focus is on teaching with video. And teaching with video uh, is when we go from the three dimensions, which I am now, through the TD, 2D, through this little screen to the other side. Things happen, we become digitalized. We can be copied, we can be distributed, we can be deleted or speeded up anytime, any place, anywhere. So my ideas on that are, are on my blog, which you can see there, but that's the area I'm interested in. What happens to us when we teach with and through video? Today, we'll look back to 2019 OEB, where I got inspired. Uh, we'll talk about the context of teaching at the moment. Then we'll talk about this 3D, 2D, 3D transformation. I'm gonna share with you two very specific examples demonstrate them, and perhaps we can use these as ideas uh, to reflect on our own teaching. And then we'll talk about teaching in the next dimension. So last year at OEB, I don't know if you were there at this presentation, but I saw uh, Nye Lee and Andrew Parry from the Imperial College Business School in the UK. Those guys presented very interesting on using holograms in live seminars. And I thought, wow, that's a really, uh, that's a really cool, um, cool thing to do. So I, I thought I've got to try that. And I did try it. And I'll share my ideas with you on that. The 2020 context is that uh, we have switched to online teaching in most cases. On the left hand side, a traditional lecture hall. On the right hand side, my home classroom standing up behind an improvised lectern, just sharing ideas and engaging via the screen. Now, when you look at what this is actually like on the left hand side, the idealized version, uh, communicating with people on the right, this is actually what you see. So teaching has changed quite dramatically. We need to develop new ways to manage this. Focusing on teaching and the learning process, before we get to holograms, we should never forget the different phases that people go through when they're learning. And this is based on a model by Emeritus Professor Jos Franson from in Holland. And we go through activating prior knowledge. I talked about OEB last year, got some ideas in your mind going. Then you're going to receive new information, process it, maybe apply it and then reflect on it. It doesn't have to go in this order, but all five phases need to be covered for a full learning process. And I'd like to think about these elements when it comes to thinking about how we can use and connect uh, with different technologies. Another question is, what are we teaching synchronously and what are we teaching asynchronously? Now, traditionally, a lot of information when it's synchronous, a live classroom, has been sending information, knowledge uh, communication. Now that can of course be done in the asynchronous environment, which frees up space in the synchronous, the here and now, how can we use this time most effectively? We can do lots of things. We can do collaborative learning. We can do interaction with experts, Q and A, we can do um, cases and discussions. So this 3D to two dimensions and back to 3D again, what happens? Well, here we have Alice going through the looking glass. She reaches up to the mirror. She's in the real world. The clock has a certain time. She puts her hand up. And she goes through to the other side. And this is, in a way, what we do when we teach with and through video, with our image, through the camera. Things change on the other side. As you can see, the clock has a face and the rules are slightly different. So understanding what that difference is on the other side is the essence of video teaching. And these two formats I'll share with you can be seen in that context. There are many great examples for virtual reality, augmented reality, 360 video. I'm sure you've got examples as well. For today, I'm just going to look at two technologies. So I want to put those to one side and just to share these two ideas with you. But of course, not forgetting these elements there. So I'd like to talk about the informal virtual presence. This is a photograph from a team meeting with my colleagues uh, last year and what happens, people are in a room and then somebody joins by laptop and is picked up and carried around and discussed and then gets passed around almost like a, you know, another person. So in a way, we're already doing that. It happens in classroom as well with students on phones joining sessions and being passed around. The two examples I'd like to share with you are the 
uh, sort of segue device and the, telepres the telepresence and the hologram lecturer. I'll go through those and then we can reflect on how they could be used in teaching practice. So this is the telepresence robot and a definition from Cato 2015. I'll let you read that. And you can see in this context, it's about smooth communication, appearing to be present, you're self-driving, you've got two wheels, you feel connected, physical presence, you can roam around and you can visit people in that space. Quite an interesting um, opportunity. That's the telepresence lecturer. And here you can see me test driving it. I'm in the Netherlands on the green screen, but uh, I'm actually in the office there in San Francisco and I'm driving this device around, I'm navigating around and I'm experimenting. You can see my battery's charged. Uh, I can raise it up, I can lower it down, I can change the screen options and I'm going to go and look at what this thing actually looks like in this particular context. So here you are, you can see yourself now as a telepresence looking in the mirror and let's see what it actually looks like. There we go. So you can see yourself. That's me in another place. And you can add a face to that and you can connect it um, and interact and have multiple versions of this. So it looks like that at the moment. It's quite a, an interesting experience. You can throw a face on. You can have multiple people interacting and moving around in a conference with real people. So that's one of the options. The second option I'd like to look at is the hologram lecturer. And in London in February, I had the chance to be turned into a hologram and communicate in that context. And that was really very interesting. Here you can see uh, I'm in London and I'm talking to Brandon, who is in Toronto, and we're discussing ideas and questions. And he just looks like a real person. He's the normal size. He's standing there in front of me. It's a real time communication. And when I walked in, I thought he was actually standing there waiting for me. But he was in Toronto. So that's what it looks from this side. Uh, if you look at the recording capture studio in London, then I went to the next room. You stand on a stage and you move yourself over. You have a um, bright lights to give you a good profile around the edge. And then down here, you can see that there is that little arrow here. That is where the camera lens is. That's me. And then you've got Brandon and somebody filming him in Toronto. We'll see what that looks like in a moment. So this is the view from Toronto. This is what Brandon sees. He sees me as a hologram projected onto a screen, lifelike, life-size, and we're having a very interesting discussion about uh, what's the added value of a hologram lecturer, in which context could it be used? And uh, when you actually talk to a hologram, somebody in another country, but they seem to be there, it's quite an extraordinary um, uh, experience. So I recommend it, uh, and I think we might be having more of it in the future. Of course, Lewis Carroll had it covered already with the Cheshire cat in Alice in Wonderland, the cat that sat in the tree and then disappeared and only the smile was left over. So he was ahead of the curve on that one. So what does this mean when we teach in the next dimension? Well, if you compare those two, uh, two formats, the Segway device is mobile in 3D. It can move around a physical space. Uh, the image is flat. You have multiple units that can interact. You can move into the student space. The hologram, on the other hand, is sort of fixed in, th uh, uh, in a 3D space, can't move around, but the image appears to be three-dimensional. There's a screen onto which you are screened. So there are differences, and each one has its own affordances. Perhaps we could take it to the next step, as my friend Frank suggested. Why don't we make the telepresence hologram, put the hologram on a Segway wheels? Then it's mobile in the 3D space. It's got the 3D image. Multiple units can move around freely. That might be something to consider if we want to stretch our minds. OK, let's go back to the synchronous, asynchronous. How are we going to use this? We can use those both of those devices in a synchronous environment, uh, communicating live with people. You can also have holograms uh, pre-recorded, and then you can deliver them uh, in an asynchronous format. So I'm interested in the following questions. Which contexts are most suited to these pedagogies can you think of? What's the big deal? What's the added value of the hologram lecture? Are we taking it too far? Are there real benefits to be, to be gained? What about the telepresence lecture? Can we find ways to uh, use and integrate and, and manage that in our educational context? And finally, where might we be in five years time? So these are some questions I'd like you to think about. Let me know what you think. So 
I'd like to say that let's go back to teaching and learning. We are not going to be replaced by holograms. We haven't been replaced by videos or by books yet. We should keep those five phases of learning. So we think which phase of learning are the learners in when we're communicating in these formats, have clear learning objectives and develop new didactic approaches. Being a hologram, talking to holograms really opened my eyes. It made me think, wow, I started to reflect on what it was to be human, to communicate uh, with a real person. Having communicated with an almost real person, when you get back to the real world, you notice how real real people are. So let's use these formats to reflect on the essence of good communication and good teaching. I've got a few references for you, which will be available on the slides, which may be of interest. I'd like to thank uh, Art Media for their um, uh, for helping me to record this in London and for Double Robotics for the session. I'm not sponsored by these guys, but those guys gave me access to their technology, so I appreciate that. Um, thank you for tuning into this session and uh, for your thoughts. And in the meantime, uh, that was teaching in the next dimension. And I wish you, uh, you know, success with the teaching, with your developing technology, and uh, look forward to meeting you in real. Uh, next time we are at the conference in Berlin. Thank you.